what I want to talk to you today about is uh, overall remedy with smart IT. And so as we look at the different areas or, or, or what we're dealing with on a regular basis, keep in mind that there, there are three main uh, things to do, if you will, with remedy with smart IT. Uh, and, and keep in mind also that is the official name of the application. So, you know, whether it's free application that we're talking about downloading, using, or, or utilizing on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, there's a long name associated to it. Uh, we have not uh, give, given it the acronym uh, junction yet, but, uh, but definitely the, uh, the, the times are coming for that. Uh, but overall, when we look at, you know, what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, we're actually changing the expectations of what, you know, what you do or how you do your job uh, every day of the week. And so when we look at some of the different areas and what's available to your users, to your customers, to your clients, as well as to your technicians, analysts, uh, change managers, and, and uh, uh, networking folks, there's a lot of different ways that they do business. Number one, uh, they want to make it easier. You know, gone are the days of the, the filling out the massive forms to, to ask for a request or, or filling out the massive forms just to go in and say, hey, I need to reset my password. Now, there are some areas in which that is still valuable. There's some areas in which that's still required and still needed. However, when you start looking at what everybody does on a day-to-day -day basis, they want to make it simple. They want to make it easy. They want it to be like their life outside of work. Uh, they have their Twitter accounts or Facebook accounts or Google Plus accounts using things like Evernote online, you know, using their smartphones, whether it's a, an iPhone or an iPad or, or Android devices or, or what have you. Uh, they really want to make sure that they have that information at their fingertips and they want to make sure it's available everywhere they go. That includes in extending out the self-service as well as context awareness and where you're located or where they're located uh, so they can find the things that are around them. You know, take, it, take an example of Yelp. Um, you go in, look for a restaurant. I wanted to be able to pull the information from around me so that I can uh, find some information that's useful. And then we also want to make it uh, very intuitive. So it would be like Amazon. I go in, I place it in the shopping cart, uh, I check out. It's, it's pretty simple, and then they've even made it simpler with uh, uh, one-click shopping. And that usually gets me in trouble on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, nevertheless, that information is there, and then we want to make sure that everything is aware, um, you know, with how they do, do their job on, an, on a regular basis. Um, but what we realize in doing so and trying to make it easier uh, enterprise applications they haven't changed. They they become uh, focused on the process overall. This is kind of what Dick was talking about a moment ago. Is is you know is the company ready? Or are they not ready? What's the the benefit or not the benefit? You know, is it something that is outdated and complex, or do you have to fill in something like a tax form? Um, and if that's the case, just to request a, a patch reset as an example, uh, that's not something that's very beneficial or user friendly to the end user, uh, the analyst. Uh, or again, your customer. So it's it's really changing the way we do things. And so because of that, uh, it, it provides a, a consequence to IT as a whole. Um, you know, the, the first one that always sticks out to me in this is not the, the bigger buttons, if you will, but the one that the very left-hand corner is just poor productivity. Um, when you look at the, the ability that um, your people are t putting in the information, they put the information into the system, and they realize that, you know what, it's quicker just to answer the question than it is to fill out the form or fill in the information or log the ticket, if you will. That then becomes a distraction to their job, also poor productivity because uh, they're not doing their job effectively and efficiently. And then what happens overall in that is the rest of those buttons, if you will. There's inconsistent skills and knowledge because it's not sharing that data. So if I need to go in, Dick's not logged his ticket or I haven't logged my ticket and Dick comes back and, and says, hey, you know, what exactly did you do to this? You go, you know, it's all in my brain. It's all tribal knowledge at that point. And what happens in that then becomes costly. If I ever leave or if I ever, ever go on vacation or something and Dick's trying to figure things out, he doesn't know what I did in a certain situation, then it becomes costly because we have to do the research again. And what that provides or what that causes overall, as far as a consequence goes, is a overall disconnection with the business. End users look at IT as being a, a core piece of the functionality within the business. However, there's a lot of disdain for IT, uh, which means that they, they don't like it. They don't like having to log a ticket. Um, you know, so we're looking for easier ways to deal with those on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so they can get higher satisfaction rates, kind of like what, um, what Dick was talking about with Rightstar, their high sat rates. 
That is one way they do that is through constant communication and making sure they're interactive with their customers, making sure they're interactive with everybody. And so what's actually complicating the matter overall is we start dealing with, you know, the lack of training. Uh, as an example, and it goes back to process focus, not user focus. And uh, if I have to go in and fill in this form just to fit your process and it's not exactly intuitive and if it's not easier for me and I can't do it the way I want to or can't do it in the way that, uh, that you know, makes it uh, very streamlined, uh, then it actually causes a bigger problem. And so when you look at some of the numbers associated to it, it you know, 39% of the lack of flexibility because everybody is too focused on the process is really where we start dealing with some of the issues. And uh, that's not to say remove the process because that's going to make it better. No, that is not the case. However, if you're not flexible enough in that process, it can turn around and bite you later, which means that there may be so many processes you have that you process yourself into a rigid structure, and that rigid structure then provides a, a harder a harder time actually providing the right answers. And as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, uh, slower speed of resolution because we're too busy with our hand size and dealing with red tape. So that type of information is, is what's happening when we look at a process-oriented company that is not flexible and not able to go in and provide the, uh, provide the easier way to do things. And so we need to have a better solution to be impactful. We need to be able to collaborate with your peers. You, be, you need, need to be able to gather that information for, uh, from other areas. Uh, I used to, uh, work at a help desk and then manage a help desk and uh, the list goes on in my list of qualifications across the board but uh, we had what's called a cubicle farm right everybody's got one of those but we had uh, you know kind of the other the other name of it if you will was a gopher farm is what you'd see is the help desk technicians come by they pop their head up over the, over the top of the cubicle and say hey have you ever done this well, what happens in that is, you know, there's conversations that go on. You have the water cooler conversations trying to determine what happened, what's going on overall, and the work doesn't get done. The answers aren't coming easily. They're not coming quicker. And so that provides or, or call, uh, causes a bigger problem overall. And when we deal with those types of things, we need to make sure that we're able to answer the questions. We still have the conversations at the water cooler. That's not being uh, shut out, if you will but we need to have more effective conversations uh, everywhere else. We need to have the water, water cooler conversations or uh, what I try to enforce uh, within my group is it's truly about your passions, what you'd like to do, not about work things. Uh, you go to the water cooler for, uh, for a break, if you will. So what is, this, uh, what is the way or what's the answer to this? And so you start looking at the, the overall remedy of smart IT or BMC remedy of smart IT. And there's a couple of screenshots in the, in the slides and uh, we'll actually get into the, to the uh, application as well. But um, we need to make sure that we have the power of remedy but still provide the overall experience or being able to go in and answer the questions that need to be answered even though we may not know the answer right off the top of our head. And by utilizing something that's gathering up information from from multiple locations, uh, what that does do is it allows us to provide the effective answer, the correct answer, and to do it efficiently by providing it a lot quicker and being able to share that information out with other individuals. And so the reason that we do that is to increase the overall power and structure, but again, increase the customer satisfaction. We also have the ability to move it beyond the, the the web browser, and so you saw an example of the web browser on the last screenshot, but now you see it with a mobile device, and so you want to have that, that service desk application that is available to your users the way that you want to provide that. That's not to say it's only mobile or only web, but you have the ability to have it built for you, if you will, um, so that you're actually able to access it any way you want to, so whether it's on a mobile device uh, or whether it's on a web browser, you still have that same functionality in the application regardless of how you're doing your job for the day. We also have the ability to go in and start working with intelligent interactions, which means that I'm able to go in and, and solve my problems quicker. Uh, as you can see in the screenshot, I actually have the ability to see everything in one screen. It's being able to look into the other areas. And if you look at some of the ways that networking has done it in the past, is they have one screen to provide information from several different network devices which are being fed by several other uh, network devices. And so being able to gather up all the information into one screen really becomes helpful 
because now I can have all the information that's valuable, that's relevant, that's dynamic, and I can go in and find my answers the way I need to. And what happens with that goes back to exactly what we've been talking about, is being more productive with better customer service. As we go through this and as this continues to build out, what you start looking at is not just the application of, you know, uh, of filling in the forms like we talked about earlier, but being able to have a consumer style experience. So uh, you go out and about, you go in and do a survey online, um, you know, and, and even with the polling that, that Dick presented a while ago, it's, it's real simple, right? Two clicks and then hit submit and you're done. It's that type of functionality that we want when we go in with our mobile applications, as an example, or our web applications. I want to be more streamlined. Uh, Evernote, if you're, for those of you that are not familiar, it's a, um, uh, I don't want to say it's a competitor to, to OneNote from Microsoft, uh, but for the most part it is. It, it's an application that is a notebook that allows you to go in and, and type in their information. What they released just recently is an actual uh, a freeform style uh, web interface. And what that means is, is before they had a nice clunky application um, that you can download on the, on the laptop, you can download it in your Windows device, you can download it on the Mac, MacBooks, what have you. But then the web interface was just as, as brutal as anything else. And so for an application to my laptop, I want something that's going to be uh, a little more meaty, but I also want the end user experience or the, the ability to go in and provide uh, more information with a, a more streamlined approach. And so you want to make sure that, uh, you know, as you sit down to this application, uh, is it going to be more streamlined? And then is it something that I can actually go in and learn very quickly? So we come down to the training part. And you can look at most of the projects that get rolled out across the board. Uh, one of the first things that gets cut uh, when you start looking at, uh, you know, tight budgets is training. And so we wanted to produce an application uh, that's a lot better, that's uh, a lot more streamlined, and you're able to learn it a lot quicker. And I'll actually show you some of those as we get into this. Um, just kind of hitting it, hitting again for being location aware, being uh, mobile access. Again, it does not matter what you're on. Uh, you're able to access it wherever you are. And, and so what we'll do is uh, kind of move on from there. But we do have the ability to start dealing with real-time sharing of issue resolution through crowdsourced information, which means um, if I have an input to this specific item, and you can see it's a knowledge base article, a common VPN connection issue, um, then maybe Dick's also got some input to that. Maybe Valerie's also got some information uh, associated to that. And so you can see on the right-hand side of the screenshot the collaboration that actually goes into this specific knowledge base article. The benefit then comes down to is now you're removing the tribal knowledge and you're providing the ability for the comments to come in a natural form as opposed to oh, I've got to sit down and type in this knowledge article and it has to be this way and it has to look like this. You've actually broadened out the way that that's actually handled. And the reason being is because now you get more data because a, a, a consumer of this, or if you will, your analysts, your technicians, the third levels or second levels and first levels, all have the ability to go in and populate this data the way they want to. Then what you can do is actually have it cleaned up uh, because now you've got all the data in one location.